The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Monday morning. 9.06 a.m. We got 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, bringing things to a short-term time frame on a 15-minute chart. You have the S&Ps right now. You're positive by more than a percent, 1.1 percent right now, up 46 points, trading at 41.53. You have the NASDAQ 100 up 193 points, 12,743. Dow up 271. Russell up 21 points right now. Bitcoin up almost $2,000 from where you were trading on Friday. Things getting a little dicey on Friday. Right back to that price level, just below 29500 We bounce. What I'll say about Bitcoin, though, all you're doing is you're chopping around basically at the highs of last week from where you traded the better part of Tuesday, Wednesday. You fell out of bed on Wednesday. We'll see how Bitcoin behaves this week. You got the gold contract right now, positive by $5 at 1855 How about crude? Holding pretty well at about 120 bucks. You're at 119.19 right now. That's up from 111 on Thursday. You take a look at crude on a daily basis. That's higher prices, folks. We are up to levels that you've only seen on a few days, as in above $120. We're trading 119.22 right now on the price of crude. As I mentioned, gold's up a few dollars right now. You have Silver up 54 cents, back to the highs that we had on Friday on silver, 22.45. And you jump to notes and bonds, we have a little bit of lower price and higher yield. The 10-year, 2.98%, right at the lows of Friday, basically 118.12, the lows Friday, 118.11, in terms of where you were. We jump over to the volatility index, the VIX this morning. We kick off with positive action. Interesting when you look at how the VIX is applied but I think that's, yeah, the VIX doesn't move until we open. So that's as of, right, probably if it's based on the volatility premiums. No, it looks like it's positive. I think that's, no, it is ticking around. Yeah, so 2507, I was going to say you'd expect maybe a little bit of a pullback with the markets up one plus percent right now, but not happening. All right, we jump around to what's happening on Monday. Amazon. These charts might do some funky things. I'm not sure how they react. Maybe it reacts on the day of, but Amazon they are splitting and they're splitting let me get this line off here because it's going to make no sense right now and back out let's put this thing on a daily what's going on okay so they've already recalibrated the price here even though they have a close of 24.47 so it's the amazon splits 24 one at the open today closed at 24.47 that would have correlated to a price of about 122.35 and Amazon's going to open up about 2.5%, 125.30. And that would be akin, right? So you got 20 shares now, so you multiply the move by 20. Amazon's up $3. Amazon would be up $60. So you'd be opening over 2,500 right now for Amazon, which is why you're opening over 125 uh, for the price of 20 shares. Be interesting to see how they trade. When you put it on a 20 for one basis, uh, got up to 188.65. Is that the all time high now? Uh, see, it gets weird when you put it on a, a weekly for some reason. Daily? Okay, daily takes us back. 188.65. I think that was the high. Let me see if I put it on a five year daily. Yeah, 188.65. Chopped around between 160 and 180 for a while. And then, bam, you talk about falling out of bed. November 19th, you're trading at 188.11. And you almost got under 100. So we have a low recently on Amazon of 101.26. You're going to open at 125 this morning. We jump over to some of the China stocks. So Diddy closed at 185. This thing has been a wreck. This almost began the slide to a real acceleration of price deterioration with China. But this morning, looks like the investigation is going to get wrapped up, and we'll jump over to some of the articles. But check out that move. You're up, what, $1.30 on a $1.80 stock. So that's 60% acceleration, a little bit of optimism potentially uh, over in China. 
Baba gets a lift from about 93 to 100. JD is up from about 56 to 60. So let's jump over to that one. The worst may be over for China stocks with tech probes end in sight. The journal says the probe of Diddy and others to conclude there's going to be some hefty fines, but the prospect of end to tighter regulations removes the drag on some of those stocks. Now, keep in mind the devastation that we just saw in those equities. They are up 60%. But percentages of small numbers can be deceiving, I like to say. And when your stock tanks from 18 bucks to $1.80, yes, you can get some large percentage moves higher, yet still be sitting at basically pennies on the dollar. So they talk about how it's up on the potential news uh, that they are about to conclude the investigation. There's going to be fines that come in. Uh, nonetheless, they all trade higher. We jump to our markets. Morgan Stanley. Sees earnings risks weighing on stocks. Surprise, surprise. Uh, the risks, folks, they are out there. Some companies managing it better than others. Companies slow to guide down in the absence, absence of recession, as Morgan Stanley says a bear market may end in the next earnings season. We'll see, man. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. We got a Fed meeting next week, folks. So you get towards the end of this week, and we're going to have uh, – a meeting February 14th and 15th, I believe, and uh, so a week from Wednesday, we get that news in terms of Fed bringing 50 basis points. We'll see what they have to say. I imagine they have a couple meetings, at least this meeting, where they're saying, you know, listen, this is our plan. We got to go forward with at least two, three cuts, even if they're not saying it outright. They got to have some room for the market to respond to what they're doing before they get too short sighted and change their approach if that's what they believe is going to work. 50 basis points, we'll see what they have to say, but that comes a week from Wednesday. Yeah, I guess we got to jump over to the news. Pretty wild that it wouldn't be a Monday morning unless Elon Musk was uh, making headlines with his Twitter motives. Uh, accuses Twitter of resisting and thwarting his right to information on fake accounts. I mean, folks, there's takeovers all the time, okay? The legality of that is always in question, I'm sure, how much information you have access to um, before you're able to purchase that company or bring it public. And I think he's talking about spam, I heard, as I was getting ready to come on the air. Um, something to that degree. Nonetheless, Twitter shares... Tanking this morning from 4050, you're down three dollars. You're down what seven eight percent right now to 3776. The price for the buyout's like 54. So smart money, not putting a lot of faith in Mr. Musk here. You know, you wanna you wanna take a gamble. You wanna buy some Powerball tickets. You can bank on Elon buying this thing at 54 dollars right now. But I imagine if it gets done, it's not getting done at 54 dollars. If it gets done, and that's a far cry. And the market right now sitting at 37. Think about the risk reward scenario, folks, in this in this. If it gets done at 54, you're sitting at 37. So you're talking about a 50% upside appreciation if that deal gets done. Right? No, nobody's even willing to take that risk at $37 for Twitter. They are, but that's where the market sits. So, and we jump over. Let's see how Tesla's reacting. Have not jumped over to Tesla. With the market positive, I'm guessing they may be. Yeah, they're up to 30 bucks. Not really hit too much, I guess, from that news of Twitter. You're positive with the market to about 7.30. S&P is up about 48 points right now. Highs of last week. Futures made it to 42.02 last Sunday night. But intra-week trading, you got there about Thursday. Just about 41.80. We open the week at about 41.55. Stay tuned, folks. We'll go over what else we have happening this week. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, positive by 46 points. NASDAQ 100 positive by 195, jumping back to Amazon for a moment. So Amazon right now, you're trading up about $3. This chart, a little funky as to how you look at it. What do I have it up here? When it loads initially, that's because I somehow have a print of 2,500, but it's trading at 125. Let's reset that chart. Nope, that's not going to do it. What do I got to do? Size it down? Auto zoom it? It's giving me some problems. That's a weekly. Unfortunately, it's not clicking. I did have it up earlier. We'll see maybe why that high is showing up. So Amazon closed at 122 and change. Yeah, maybe on the open it'll recalibrate. There we go. There we go. So this does not have the 15-minute action, but maybe it can bring it in. So this is the 24-1 stock split. Now, I was just reading it. I'll pull up the article. Oh, that just put me back. Let's, okay, there's your daily. So when Amazon was thinking about their stock split, okay, I forget the day that they actually announced it. Um, maybe it was back in here in March when you got some acceleration with the market. There's a pop on that news potentially. I can look it up. But Amazon was envisioning a world where they were pushing 190 even for a 24 one basis. Remember, they got up to 3,800, right? 3,883, I think, is the high pre-split on Amazon. So when you go 20 for one, they're probably envisioning a $200, $250 share price if the price keeps appreciating because they were already almost at $200 when they were going to split. Well, you almost got it for $99, folks, only a few days back on that type of comparison when Amazon almost traded under 2000. Amazon did not envision a 50% pullback when they were thinking about splitting 20 for one within the span of literally almost a few months. So the article that I was reading back here, let's see if I can pull it up. Now the headline, they get more than they bargain for or something, delivers more than bargain for, for 20 to one. And one thing they do talk about is some of these equities that were far outside of being in the Dow Jones Industrial Average because it's price weighted. So you're competing with stocks that are sometimes trading at $50 and $40. If you ever put a stock at 2,000 or 3,000 or 4,000 like Amazon in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, that stock would dictate the entire average of that entire 30 stock index. Now, that just points to how skewed their the way that they calculate the index is more than it should eliminate Amazon. But what this does talk about is that uh, 
it creates the opportunity to potentially put them into the Dow, which I hadn't even considered because they're trading at $100, $120. Their equity is far over that price, I believe, that are trading in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Um, and you have splits all over the place. Shopify has a split going on, I think, 10 for 1. Google has a split coming up as well. Tesla, of course, led things off. Apple has a split as well. Apple and Tesla, one of the first ones. I think Apple was one of the first ones uh, that was able to do that. But it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Scrolling back up to here. So Goldman uh, says the U.S. economy remain, remains on a narrow path to a soft landing. The one thing they do say, in similar to what I was just talking about, is that the next couple of meetings are basically on a path. So we'll get down to what they talk about. Three to three and a quarter percent is the terminal funds rate that they forecast and have said that they see hikes of 50 basis points likely in the Fed's next two meetings, the first one being next week. Further off, they said September is a close call between increases of 25 and 50. In the near, in terms of near-term communication, there is little incentive for Fed officials to deviate from their relatively hawkish framing of the last few months. I would agree. They're they need to give it some time. So don't look for any huge surprises on this meeting. I think the market would be aware of that as well. They are definitely on a path with this meeting next weekend, next meeting next month, giving it some time for their approach to actually have an impact in the market. We get that meeting next week. Nonetheless, there'll be some volatility potentially. There'll be some meeting uh, volatility on a press conference as always. But Chairman Powell, I'm sure he has his message ready in terms of what he'll be coming with. Uh, the one thing I did want to talk about in this article up here, though, is that they're talking about whether it's non-farm payrolls and you look where we are from pandemic levels to pre-pandemic levels. We're almost back up there. We're still below in terms of the gross number or maybe net number, right? The headline number in terms of how many total jobs, non-farm payroll. We're almost back to pre-pandemic levels. But look at the household plus non-profit deposits and currency. That's a number that's at $4 trillion. We came into the pandemic at like $1.5 trillion. I mean, they talk about a strong balance sheet for consumers. Yeah. Um, they could help this economy withstand what's coming. It's a very small, narrow window, folks, because what happened last week with the non-farm payroll number on Friday, to zoom in on the action... Here's Friday's action. For a brief moment, we traded up to 41.60. I think I was listening to Bloomberg at the time to get the report. They kept using the term Goldilocks, and it wasn't their news. It was the analysts, whatever it was. It was a very good report in terms of not being that bad, but not being too hot, cooling off a bit. There's this very small sweet spot, okay, and an article up here. Uh, from this author, which I enjoy, John Authors, the path to a soft landing is getting a little easier. It isn't inevitable that policymakers will crash the economy in their efforts to bring down inflation, even though the task remains friend, friendless, friend, friendish, fiendishly, there we go, fiendishly difficult. And he makes the case in here, when you talk about ISM, surveys remain consistent with a uh, soft landing. And a number of different data in here in terms of labor market strength. We were looking at it. Unemployment is still slightly higher than before the pandemic. Um, there is an avenue to it, folks. But you got to factor in the risks of not getting there as well, which is definitely possible in this market. And we find out, though, in like two or three months whether what the Fed is really doing is having an impact, whether the supply chain issues are becoming unclogged and helping this market. The one thing that's a little bit of a sticker price shock is that when you get 8 or 9% inflation throughout the year, we all kind of understand it, but I think our brains aren't calibrated and many people don't understand it, and that they want inflation to go away, right? But inflation going away doesn't lead back to prices before inflation set in because inflation is judged on a year-over-year -year basis. So inflation going away is just the current prices that are existing being sustained. And those are relatively high prices in this market, and I don't think they're going anywhere, and that presents a risk a little bit to the economy. Wages rising, what, 5.2% year over year, I think, last year? It'll be interesting to see what happens to wages as inflation 
differs from where it's at right now. Does it stay where it is? Could it ever heat up again? Does inflation come down? Wages obviously play an important part of that, but wages were really delayed in things. Maybe wages are going to have to play catch up and maybe wages are going to remain hot even as inflation and supply chain issues sustain. Well, what happens if wages remaining hot, right, starts weighing on inflationary tendencies as supply chain issues start to ease? So you have supply chain issues easing. You have wages that weren't able to catch up in a very, very strong labor market. I could easily see wages playing catch up and they rightfully should play catch up and the data with the jobs opening could easily give them that room to play catch up which could all lead to a, another impact on inflation coming off the heels of a supply chain issue that may be easing it's a tough road for the fed and we get to find out in the next two three or four months because the comps we're running against last year for inflation we should see some easing numbers stay tuned folks we'll be right back for the trading week to open if you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with a free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps open up the trading week right now up 45 points. You're trading at 41.53. The NASDAQ 100 up 200 right now. You have the Dow up 225, the Russell up 20. We jump to Amazon. Yeah, these charts, I guess it's not going to load on a 15 minute for some reason, but on a daily, it's loading for me right now. You're up 2.2% right now on Amazon shares trading at 125.71. You're up $2.37. And remember, you got to multiply that times 20. So you're trading up about $50 for the price of Amazon if you were still trading at about that. I think it closed at just under $2,500 on Friday. Amazon right now up 2%. Let's see how some of the other FANG stocks are trading. We jump to Microsoft shares up more than 1%. You got the NASDAQ 100 up 1.5% right now. Apple shares 
Do they have their worldwide developer conference going on today? I think they may. Uh, Apple up 1.6% right now. We jump over to Tesla shares. Tesla gets you a lift up 4% right now. Let's see how Twitter's faring. Down 5.1%. Catches a little bit of a lift off the lows for Twitter. Trading at 38.11. And we jump to some of the airlines. As Spirit. What is Spirit? Save. That's right. So they got a sweetened bid from JetBlue this morning. Up 4.3%. JetBlue, man. They're positive by 8 tenths percent. I gave it almost a chuckle. They have just been getting punished. My friends have chats. JetBlue is a huge hub in Boston. And one of my friends actually books multiple tickets when he's flying, for work especially. He's got to be there because he's had so many problems with JetBlue. So he'll book a JetBlue flight and another flight. He makes sure he can cancel and at least use the money for the other flight on the other airline. And as recently as a month ago, he did that. He's at the airport, or it's two or three hours out, whatever it is. JetBlue flight looks good. He says, okay, I'm going to cancel the other flight, cancels the other flight. JetBlue flight gets delayed by like four or five hours right away. They have a big problem, whether it's hiring, whether it's pilots, whether it's um, people helping you on the plane, some level of their issues going on, and it's hu probably a human capital issue. And uh, they're sitting at 10.53 right now. So to get into their deal, uh, Spirit jumped after JetBlue is going to increase its breakup fee for the deal to $350 million and pay part of that as a dividend if the deal is consummated, increasing the value to $31.50 per share. So you have uh, Save to jump back to, trading at $21.48. Quite a far cry from the prices they're talking about, man. So we'll see if the market thinks that's going to get done. Yeah, I mentioned all the China stocks trading dramatically higher. Maybe they become investable again if those investigations are over. I have no action in China, folks. So speaking from per from a person that's not willing to put any dollars right now at risk in any of those, I will say that my fundamental view of China is that Xi wants to control everything. But in order to control everything and to keep his people at bay, they need to have economic growth. And these are the companies that are going to provide economic growth. So he's not going to tank them into completion. I'm not sure they're going to be trading over in our indices or what it is um, or how they're going to exist. But he's basically smacked them all down. And now maybe it's trying to let them grow again. And they do need to exist. It's not something that they're just going to um, clamp them down and not let them have the success that they've had. So we'll see how that one plays out. Other stocks with action. So we have some S&P rebalancing. Keurig, Dr. Pepper, they're going to be added to the S&P 500 index prior to the open on January 21st on Semiconductor and Real Estate Investment Trust VICI properties. Uh, Keurig, dramatically higher. I mean, you know, there's nothing better than being in the S&P 500, folks, folks, in terms of being added to indexes. You're up 5.2%. You're back to where you were a couple weeks ago. We have highs recently at about $38 for Keurig Dr. Pepper. And then on the other side of that, Under Armour is among those being replaced in the S&P 500. Uh, they're going to move to the mid-cap 400 along with Laser Maker IPG. Under Armour trading lower. UAA is their symbol. Check out that chart. So you're trading flat. They were lower. They're flat with the S&Ps positive by more than 1%. But taking a look at this chart on the long term, yeah, be careful of this one, man. I mean, you're talking about trading basically at lows of the, pre -pan the pandemic. Uh, yes, you did make a low of $7, but this thing chopped around basically between 8 bucks and $11, and you're trading at $11 right now for Under Armour. Let's check around to some of the other airlines right now. United up 1.5%. All these stocks, man, just so, so near the lows basically. I mean, check out United. You're trading at the same prices that you were at in June of 2020. Think about then. Yes, you got quite an acceleration in these airlines. Um but travel is decimated. You're trading at the same prices. Crude's trading at 120. That's a big factor of them trying to make money, I'm sure. Delta, trading at right at the 382 of the entire move from 17 to 52. So Delta a little bit better than where United is there. American was the other one I was jumping into. So American sitting basically at the 618 of that move. They've had some real volatility recently. American, and then we jump to Southwest. Domestically, you see the domestic faring a little better. Up to 44, well off the lows that you had. JetBlue, not the case, though, as they've mismanaged things, probably. 
Yes, yeah, so it is the Worldwide Developers Conference today. Uh, they've, they're well off the highs. And I think they have a couple of what? They're going to turn the iPad I saw into, or iPad Nano maybe, into more of a laptop. It does seem like they have a lot of products, man. And I know they make so much money off of all these products. But at some point, I keep saying to myself, and I am a huge Apple fan, folks. I got an Apple phone right here. I don't have my Apple watch on, but my Apple watch is right here getting charged, uh, which I love wearing outside. I did have uh, an Apple tablet that was about 10 years ago, and probably I haven't used it in a few years, so it's kind of just out of whack. But I can't keep track of all the, the products and which one would best suit me, right? If I want a laptop, I know the MacBook Pro is like the powerhouse. If I'm going to do some real work or even some creative work or music production or film production, video production with TFNN, but they just have so many products now. What they've been so good at is, is trimming their products where you have one segment for each thing and maybe a couple products that suit every person. I mean, that's what almost brought this company down. Uh, before Steve Jobs came back is they had too many products. What did he come back and, and trim it to, you know, one computer, one this, one that, a personal computer, a business computer, and something else. And that's how the company took off originally. Apple, though, up 1.5%. The market getting a little soft from where you were in the open. We jumped to uh, commodities. You get the gold contract right now up about 4 bucks at 18.54. Gold just continuing to chop around. It's been a tough market in that gold market. Crude. 119.55 right now for the price of crude. And we jump to the notes and bonds sitting at almost 3% right now as we have a Fed meeting next week. And look at where we've been, right? Putting things on the daily. I mean, you just dropped from 120.09. We're down almost two full points from where we were trading May 25th. And you're basically within a point of the recent lows of 117.08 and that's with the fed meeting coming up as i said uh next tuesday and wednesday and we're going to get 50 basis points and boy we start seeing those securities roll off as well i talked about june june's the first month that you're going to see those numbers roll off in terms of tens of billions of dollars of the fed having treasury securities and mortgage-backed securities rolling off that they won't be investing uh and that begins happening this week so we'll see how that hits that market as well all right, we got the S&Ps, folks, up 36 points right now. We get the NASDAQ up 160. We get the Dow up 174. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about my dad's Time of the Trade Methodology webinar coming up on Wednesday. Great time in the market. He'll be going over his entire trading methodology, folks. You get his newsletter. You get his book. And sign up because right when you sign up, you start getting his newsletter, folks, okay? And you get that newsletter for a month after the webinar. So you get a little bit extra time if you sign up now. Check it out. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. 
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 46 right now. The Dow up 241. The Nasdaq up 192. You take a look at this thing on a weekly basis from 2174 to 4808. We're sitting right now at 4155. Got to love the beauty of Fibonacci's, folks. You take this percentage-wise. I mean, you talk about bouncing literally almost to the tick. Just lining this up by eye. But I'm talking about a 382 level of 3802. And what do we got for the exact low there? 3807. About five points away from that low in the 382. We're currently sitting near that 236. Uh, but not far off in terms of where this has been. That is the S&P's. NASDAQ, you make it to almost the exact 50%. Let me get this Fibonacci off here for some clarity. So keep these on your radar, folks. Okay? Because they are levels that matter. And what I'd say about the NASDAQ is that you are back to the 382. Okay? which uh, we'll see if that acts in a, as an area of resistance in the NASDAQ. We jump back to Amazon on the first day they're trading 20 for 1. You're up 2.1% for Amazon shares trading at 125.85 this morning. So back to my dad's webinar going on Friday. So it'll be all day, 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern time. So five hours. There'll be a half hour break for lunch. It'll be a three hour session in the morning, 9 a.m. till noon. You come back for an hour and a half in the afternoon from 1230 till 2. You get his newsletter. For a month, Market Insights, that's $169, folks. You get his book physically mailed to you. That's $88 value on Amazon. Uh, that is what the book costs. And you get the webinar. The cost, $295. It'll be archived. All of it will be archived if you can't attend live. It is in our Tiger's Den Discord room. Great piece of software that we have going on with the Den. So you'll be in there with the other traders going to this seminar. You'll be able to chat. You'll be able to follow along with Tom's screen, uh, and it's a great value, folks. It'll be Friday going on. And as I mentioned, you get Market Insights for a month, uh, but the way we're doing it is the moment you sign up, you get Market Insights, and everybody is going to get Market Insights for one month from, the, from Friday on. So you'll get it through July 10th. Okay, so if you sign up right now, you get it for uh, a month and a week almost. You signed up, for those that signed up already, you're already subscribed to Market Insights, as I'm sure you know. Um, and so that will run through July 10th. We will close this, folks, on Thursday. All right? I tell you, it's amazing how many orders we get leading up to an event. And it makes sense, man, right? People might not know that they're available. They might be a little bit on the fence. They're not sure of maybe their schedule, maybe that Friday, maybe they have kids, maybe they have work, whatever it is. Thursday presents itself. They say, okay, I have the option. I can go. Uh, it's something I want to do. I find it, uh, I'm convinced that there's enough value there at 295 plus a newsletter plus a book. Point being, we get a lot of signups in the last day. I would love to keep it open for the last day. The problem is, is that we get so many signups leading up to the actual minute that it opens that it's very difficult to get those people in the room and happy if they're completely new to TFNN. If you're already in the Tiger stand, if you sign up, the order's processed. Everything's there immediately, but we do need to get you in the Discord server room, okay? And that just takes a few ticks at, uh, clicks of the button as well. But we are going to close this right after Tom's show on Thursday. So we're going to be around, of course, working Thursday, Thursday night. We want to make sure we see every order that comes in before we leave on Thursday night to make sure that we're not showing up on Friday morning and need to help anybody at the last minute. So check that out on the front page. 
excuse me. And uh, if you plan on going, there's your incentive to sign up now. We are going to cap it at 40 uh, if we get there, but you start getting the newsletter immediately. He's got a new newsletter out this morning uh, every day at 930, and you get the book mailed to you as well, and then you get Friday's webinar. So it should be a good one. With the market having a little bit of volatility in both directions right now, the s and is pulling back a bit. That's my weird Amazon chart. We get some volatility to kick things off, man. Look at these five-minute bars. That's a 10-point S&P bar. That's a 15-point S&P bar right there. And already we were at about a 10-point S&P bar here. We're trading at 41.46 so far this morning. All right, jumping around, what else I have pulled up here? What do we have as I jump around? Yes, Bitcoin. Okay. Uh, so as I was talking about China stocks, uh, Who's talking about they got no Bitcoin in there? Somebody. Um, Bitcoin miners are selling tokens as prices linger near lows. Now, they should say are transferring tokens to exchanges. And they make the distinction, okay? But they may not be selling. They probably are. But you got to understand actually what the data says. Flow from miners to exchanges seen as indicative of more sales. New miners that counted on higher prices may face liquidations. So you have these huge crypto mining companies, and miners transferred about 195,663 coins to exchanges in May, the biggest monthly increase since January, according to data from CoinMetrics. Based on Bitcoin's average of about $32,000 in May, the total value $6.3 billion. Now, they're just moving that to exchanges, okay? The number does not necessarily mean miners are selling that many tokens since some miners would put their coins in exchanges for other transactions and not sell. Very possible. But in general, you transfer them to the exchange if maybe you want to liquidate that position. It makes sense, right? It is interesting how you can see how markets can be manipulated, though, right? You would never want to tank the market yourself by indicating you're selling when you're not. But miners transferring tokens to exchanges could in itself be a bearish indicator bringing the market down. Meanwhile, they wouldn't even be selling. Sellers include publicly traded miners, such as Riot Blockchain. Uh, they had served as a proxy for equity investors. The token has dropped about 35% this year. Uh, one person here from Compass Mining. I think miners are just ta talking about the macro environment. It's probably prudent to sell Bitcoin at these levels in order to keep the operation safe. It's just like companies, folks. Uh, it's just like J Jamie Dimon talking about preparing for a storm. They're not sure where this market's going. They need money to be in business. More large-scale public miners have become cash-strapped as it's become harder to raise capital through debt or stock sales during a recent bear market. Really interesting, right? So negative breeds negative in terms of if you've got miners now that instead of believing in this, raising capital, not just selling everything that they have, all of a sudden what you're doing is you're basically getting liquid, releasing those assets to make sure if this market tanks even further, you're not the one holding the bag of Bitcoin that's worth $10,000. The flow data tracking transactions between miners and exchanges is one of the best proxies for sales of mined coins, but it has its limitations. The data includes digital wallets from major exchanges such as Binance and Gemini. It does not have data from Coinbase due to the biggest U.S. exchange's wallet design. That's quite a flaw in the data. Some of the miners also opt to liquidate their crypto holdings through over-the-counter trading desks whose trading data is typically not public. So. There's a lot of ways that data could not represent all of that, but I would pay attention when you have that transfer for the largest transfer since January and you have the market, it would make sense that you have some of these companies needing to make sure if they can't go to the public markets for money, that maybe they don't get less than 30000 right now because that's the difference of them being in existence and not being in existence. That's what Riot Blockchain looks like, okay? You're not back to where we were when Bitcoin was at 30000 folks. You're at $6.31, okay? When this thing took off, you were trading at $4.12. You almost give it all back. Now, Bitcoin, for comparison, you're still sitting where you were last year. I talk about the same thing with Coinbase, okay? Bitcoin ever goes back to where it was in October or September of 2020, 10000 very real chance that people stop trading crypto to the point that Coinbase has trouble existing, at least in their current structure. And Riot seems like that's definitely going back to a few dollars, if not. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. 
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. DFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now up by 37 points. We give back some of the gain that we had overnight. You're trading right now at 41.43. That's on a 15-minute, on a one-minute basis, just to see the volatility since we've opened. You got up to 41.56. We're trading right near the lows that we've been trading at for the last 24 minutes since the opening bell. 41.43 made it just below 41.40 at one point in that market. NASDAQ up 160. We jump to Amazon. Be interesting to see how they finish the day. Amazon now above 126. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see if some of these companies, Google's going to be splitting, Shopify, uh, Apple already split, all of them trading much lower than they envisioned they'd probably be trading when they were splitting originally. Now, Amazon, got to put it on a daily to see the move. You're up 2.3% right now. We're going to be coming right into this gap from their last earnings. That would put you the gap at about 130. You're trading at 126 right now. And out of curiosity, from this entire move lower, man, what a move lower, right? $70 move lower. And realistically, you got to multiply that times 20 almost to get what we're used to, which would be a $1,400 move. Uh, Amazon, that 382, 127.86. We're going to bump up against that level right as we bump up against this gap that you gap lower on their last earnings for Amazon. And remember, Amazon, part of the reason they gap lower and continued lower, they said that they may have problems this coming quarter that they're going to be reporting as well. Two quarters. Uh, they lost money. They may do it again. They kind of led the charge in talking about the negative action that may be coming down the line. 
in a big way. Now, Apple said they didn't experience those problems last quarter, but they said next quarter we're going to experience those problems. Four to eight billion dollars was what they were talking about. Apple for their worldwide developer conference day, they're up 1.5 percent right now. We jump over to Twitter as Mr. Elon Musk is saying that he was not aware that there are bots on Twitter. He didn't say that, folks, okay? But the fact that he's playing now after signing the deal to buy Twitter for $44 billion, when one of the reasons why he said he wanted to buy it was because there's so many bots, is that he can't figure out how many bots are there. Seems like that would be a negotiating point that you'd go through before buying Twitter for $44 billion. All right, folks, thanks so much for starting your trading day off with me. Remember, check out my dad's webinar going on Friday. Hasn't done one of these in a couple of years. Not sure when the next one's coming up. Uh, stay tuned. Basil Chapman's up next, folks. Larry's coming up live at 11. Fast Market at 12. Steve Rhodes, Dave White, Tom O'Brien this afternoon. Have a great Monday, everybody.